Welcome back. This is 40 Days, 40 Nights, Mind, Body, and Soul, Part 7, Walking in the Spirit. Today, we're going to be going over three important points and one important scripture. Let's go ahead and start off by asking the question, is the soul and spirit the same? And we're just going to use Google today and we'll type it in. What is the difference between the soul and spirit biblically? And see what pops up. The first thing that pops up, it says, what is the difference between the soul and spirit? At the top here, the soul is our humanity that makes us feel emotions. The spirit is our deeper connection with the Lord when we believe in God and receive Jesus. Okay. And now we're going to go down. We'll go down to the first people also ask, what is the difference between Okay, soul, spirit, and the Bible. Click that. The soul then is the distinct part of us that takes a clay statue of dust and turns it into a person. When the Bible speaks of our non-physical part as spirit, it often connects with the unique way that the Holy Spirit engages with us. Okay, that makes sense. So, I mean, as we can see, the soul and spirit are pretty much the same, but kind of different. Same difference, if that if that if that means anything to you. So, you know, your soul is something that makes you feel emotions, and your spirit is is in you. It's basically, you know, the Holy Spirit speaking to God's spirit. All right, let's go to our second point. Where is the soul in the human body? Where is the soul? Where, where? We all, as we can see, we got the, the difference. The spirit is something you can't see. Now we're just typing in, where is, where is the soul located? It popped up. Where is the soul located? Okay. It says the soul or Adam, Adman, Credited with the ability to in living the body was located by ancient atom, atomist and philosophers in the lungs or heart in the penal gland. Can't pronounce that word. This discards and generally in the brain. Okay. Okay. So we can see that this is kind of all putting the whole mind, body, and, and soul, like it's kind of putting it all together. But, uh, okay, so we can see that it's highlighted, it says, in your lungs, all heart, and in the penile gland, uh, which a lot of people say your third eye. Um, a lot of, that's what a lot of people say. And generally in the brain, okay, that, that that says it all right there, you know, mind, body, and soul. Um, but the lungs or heart is very important. Uh, that I want everybody to remember. And this question was, where is your soul located? And one of the things it says is in your lungs and heart. And uh, I think that that's that's uh interesting. So let's move on to our, our third point, uh, which is once you have mastered the mind, body, and soul, then you will start walking in the spirit. And what that means is like you got to get your mind into a place where, you know, you have to stop thinking about being in a box in this in this world. And get yourself out of the matrix and start thinking spiritually thinking on stuff that you can't see and, and and you know your body of course you know your body you have to get your body in tune with the way that you 
want it to be, you know, not the way that it wants to be because it, the flesh is very weak. It's going to want to do whatever it's going to want to do. And your soul, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and your soul is, how, you know, how you, you, you feel and, and the way that you can express that a lot through your lungs by singing in your heart. What's in your heart? You can sing what's in your heart. And uh and ultimately, you know, your your uh penal gland and your and your and your brain, you know, all of that will come together and and that that's what really will create your soul, which is your spirit, where you're walking literally in the spirit. And uh and uh, so now I want to go to Psalms 100. Um, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all today. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Now, I want everybody to to tune in to this video that's going to explain how you can walk in the spirit. Back to business. What's up, everybody? So we're looking at week five and six out here. As you can see, week five and six had to be together because God has been keeping me so busy in his beautiful ministry work and um from doing all types of stuff, being in the streets, uh, doing ministry work, serving people, um, from traveling, still gotta work, take care of myself. Uh, it's been a beautiful walk, a beautiful journey right now currently in Miami as you can see doing some fishing got my pole out there just sitting while I make this video something get a hold to it probably take my pole in the water <laughs> first time fishing in a while uh but yeah so week five you know I was in Orlando um that was amazing beautiful uh journey there working and uh just being able to touch people and reach people bring people closer to our creator jehovah yahweh and uh bring them closer to jesus yahshua um and uh i'm just thankful you know i'm thankful thankful for the, to be here today uh just thankful to be able to to uh to travel um and do the things that jesus did and taught us to do i can do it you can do it 
um, as a follower, a true follower, and a true believer, first you have to believe. Um, so week five, I mean, that's what it was really all about. Uh, just really working from with my hands to working in the streets, uh, serving people. Um, you know, the beginning of me being able to, uh, to trust, let me rephrase that. I want to say my faith, building my faith, um, not on the things that I can control with the things that I can see, but the things that I couldn't see having faith that I was going to be taken care for. Um, that's the big lesson that God has taught me on week five. Week six, well, week six, it was... You know, we're kind of at the beginning of week six. But um, not too far. Uh, well, really, what? Uh, this is this is week six, the be beginning of week six, I believe. Anyway, week six has been uh, again basically the faith thing let the spirit lead me in the direction to go don't don't never lean on my own understand just because i can't understand a lot of things like why do you want me to go here why do you want me to go there look look where i'm at right now this week six so look where i'm at right now i'm in miami i didn't i didn't look on maps um and try to figure out where i was gonna sleep i just said okay what you want me to do? And this is where I ended up right now. Um, currently on, I was, I, I've been staying on the beach, South Beach, North Beach. I slept for the last couple of nights going through the rainstorms. Uh, that was like a lesson too, going through the storms. Um, Cause I never really was out here to really get wet not have like some type of shelter or roof over my head uh but basically north and south beach um nobody been bothering me but i just know that you know jehovah is is angry um in certain places of the world, I ain't got nothing. Um, well, he's really angry at the world. His wrath is fin finna come soon. He's been telling me. Uh, but I'm on Virginia Island, <laughs> Virginia Island and Key Belargo, something like that. But anyway, it's south. It's almost like to the Keys. But this is gonna be my keys because I don't I don't think I'm gonna make the Florida keys. Especially on this on this trip. So week five and six is down in the books. Uh again, you know, God has been telling me that he wants me to, to spend some time with him alone. That's why you see me out here fishing. I ain't at work, you know working with my hands I'm talking about. I'm still doing ministry work. I met these really cool uh, guys. They was out here fishing. And I said, hey, you know what I'm saying? I got a fishing pole that I ain't even never even put in the water yet, you know? As you can see, like I'm out here with my bag. Uh, and uh, they're like, uh, yeah, uh, you need to put that thing in the water. Let's, let's go ahead and get you uh, get you set up and gave me, you know, some whole bait, whole time, you know, I was preaching, you know, not necessarily preaching, but 
talking about a God and everything. And so that was good. That was amazing. It gave me a whole box of squid that I love fishing with. So, yeah, you know, it's letting the spirit lead you. And this the things, you know, God was basically telling me, want me to, to, to just slow down, go fishing. Don't worry about nothing. I ain't worried about nothing. And, you know, in the first place, got a little overwhelmed a little bit. Uh, beginning of week six, a little overwhelmed with all the, the rain and everything. But, uh, but I made it through. Thanks to you uh, Thanks to John. Uh, it's just been a beautiful, beautiful journey, beautiful walk. And I can't wait to see what's next. But uh, the ending of week four, I mean, uh, the ending of week five and week six is the beginning of something special that I'm going to introduce right now. 40 days and 40 nights. Be on the lookout. It's been 40 days and 40 nights since I've been out here on the trail. And I got some scripts already written. Of course, y'all know all the scripts that are already written. But 40 days and 40 nights. That's the next topic. So it's about to get real interesting. So the ending of week five and week six, 40 days and 40 nights. Y'all can do the counting if y'all want. But I'm out here. I love y'all. Peace. Till next time. Be praying for y'all.